So this is Albion Street in Lewis, and this is the um, street that apparently the um, Church of the Holy Sepulchre of the Templars was somewhere along here. Um, who knows exactly where, nobody, but um, I think somebody suggested it might be under this car park over here. Uh, and that uh, please for um, doing an archaeological dig, I think it's that car park there, uh, were made here a little while back. And I think um, they were uh, denied. Nobody was allowed to do anything here, obviously. Um, but I've always wondered, this library looks quite church-like sits quite church like obviously it's not the church um but yeah it's a i've always wondered whether this was the area that it was the beginning of albion street and then um oh, kind of interesting i'll see if i can show you unfortunately that isn't the library anymore uh, they moved that away it was a really cool place um but the sea pr probably would have come up to the foot of this hill um, flooded right up to the foot of the hill, so this would have been just off of it. But yeah, this is where they apparently had their church. I think there's supposed to be an inn down here called the Turk's Head. Uh, something to do with bringing back Turkish heads from um, the Crusades. Uh, but I don't know if that's true or not. There's some new buildings here. But yeah, pretty cool. Somebody, somewhere, might live right on top of where the Templars had their church down here. Um, and obviously with all the stuff I've been talking about, they're the links to do with Hamsey and the Hospitallers. Uh, but yeah, this is Albion Street. Oh, it's another really important one. Albion is the original name for Britain. Um, and there aren't that many places called Albion in Britain. And obviously we have Brighton Albion, which is the football club. It must be like a, uh, in relation to this. Obviously this is so close to Lewis. But I don't think there are very many Albion um, name places in the whole of Britain. So it's very interesting that there is one here where the Templar Church used to sit, apparently. Uh, and where I believe that the sort of beginnings of British history uh, occurred. I think it was all here. And I don't know if you can see over in the distance, the downs. There's the valley that opens up. So, and all these buildings wouldn't have been here, obviously. So you'd have just been able to see straight across there, across the sea, which would have been down there. Um, and then I think there were Roman forts and uh, then Anglo-Saxon forts. And I think they abandoned Britain from this area, but it's a kind of incredible spot. And I'm sure at some point I'll be proved right <laughs> at some point, but um, just gotta keep the faith, keep going. I'm just gonna go down and see the Lewis Martyrs Memorial. So here's the inscription. I have to flip the camera. Up. How do you do that? This stone was laid by Mr. Arthur Morris in memory of the 17 men and women who died at the stake in Lewis during the Marion. Never heard of that expression. Persecution, 1554-1557. I'm guessing that's Mary, Mary and <laughs> um, Mary, Queen of Scots. Bloody Mary, I think they call her. Uh, but anyway, obviously, I'm not the only person who is affected to the point at which they wanted to actually put a memorial up. And then there's another memorial up on Cliff Hill. If I could see it then, but you can't. I'm going to go up there in a minute and um, show you all that as well. Just thought I'd put this one in as well. Interesting to find out who J.P. Morris is. And interesting that it's the 11th of August 1915 that that happened. Because it's around then that the altar in Hansey Church was moved onto its current location. And I think the Desai tomb area was taken down. So we'll find out about J.P. Morris. Yeah, another thing that's a an old relic of the time <laughs> was that building that says Cecil Cornwall, it's called Temple House. Uh, obviously, in reference to the Templars. And there's that ghost story that I put up about um, Ice Cream Lil, who I think that building used to be a cinema at one point or another. Um, but before that, people wonder. I think it's just the name is just stuck, but perhaps it was there to, you know, who knows? Who knows? Unless proper um, archaeological exploration is done. We'll never know, and that does seem to be the case, doesn't it? All over the world. Oh, we found a new 
room in the pyramid, but we're not going to look. Uh, oh, people think there's a chamber under the sphinx, but we're not going to look. Oh, can we dig under the place where we think the temple church will be? Nah, probably best not. Yeah, so, as you can see, I'm kind of out of patience with the archaeological world. People want to find something. There was a time, like a couple of hundred years ago, you could just go and have a look at this, dig this stuff up. You look at Gideon Mantle and what he did in Lewis. Now you can't touch a thing. Anyway, this is the um, route up to where the martyrs were burned in Lewis. That's a memorial for the soldiers that died in World War One. And then just over there is the town hall. And the other day. They let me down to see where the martyrs were held, 10 of them, before they were taken to the square just over there in Bern. There's a strange place. Right, mate. But really cool to go and see it. And I think what I'm going to do is put up my story that I wrote on Richard Woodman Coates. He's got his last words. He actually wrote them down in a prison cell in Chichester, I think, or at least he was being held by the Bishop of Chichester. So not in this one. He was obviously brought in with the other seven. Um, but it's his last words written all in old English. He had written down his entire story as to why he ended up being burned at the stake. I think it's probably interesting for everybody to read, so I'll just stick that up soon. But yeah, there's the steps. And I'll try and show you the picture of the inside. Um, coming up, last things they saw. There's the White Hart Hotel. That's where Thomas Paine used to meet. I can't remember his name of the group of men that used to meet there. Something like the debating club, the gentleman's debating club, something like that. It's not a terribly good name. <laughs> but, um, yeah, he used to come down here, live down the end of the high street there, married in the church opposite. He used to walk down the high street to get to the White Hart here. And then he'd have um, his meetings, debates, that sort of thing in here. In my book, I've kind of fictionalized the whole thing and that the Masons were in there trying to kind of upset the whole proceedings. And then they followed him across to America um, to carry on doing so because he was a bastion of freedom and they were trying to retake the monarchy's kind of power. But oh, I can't who knows? It's so bloody difficult to work it out. See if they let me in. So I just asked and they said I can come in. So I think. Yeah, it's this room. Oh, cool. <laughs> oh, wicked. So this is the room that he held his meetings. <laughs> it's amazing if you ask, you can get to see some cool things. So this is the, I don't know whether any of this is original. It kind of looks pretty original, doesn't it? The old paneling on the wall and the fireplace. I wonder if he was stood here chatting with Thomas Gage, who knows? Uh, but this is the room. I think that looks to the law courts just over there. So that's the crown court. But yeah, this is cool. <laughs> Is that Thomas Paine? I bet it is. It's got to be, isn't it? It looks very much like a figure from his era. Look at these old timbers. They're awesome. They've survived some serious amounts of time, haven't they? And this is the building they've written, so this is obviously very old. How cool, walking in Thomas Paine's footsteps, Thomas Gage, and God knows who else as well. You'd think they all knew each other, these um, famous people of the time. And it was interesting to find out about Thomas Beckett um, being a visitor to Lewis. We'll go back down to St. Michael's Church in a minute and have a look around there, see if I can get into the Masonic Hall as well there. If anyone's in, I want to speak to them. Ah, what's this? In Congress, July 4th, 1776. The unanimous declaration of the 13 United States of America. Ha! Oh, that's cool. I'm guessing this isn't original. 
his signature is gonna be on here somewhere. See, I don't know half of these people. I don't know much about American history. We've got William Ellery, Roger Sherman, Sam Huntington. We're looking for Thomas Paine. Interesting to see his handwriting as well. Don't think it's them. George Wythe. So stone. There's a Thomas. Don't think that's him, no. I don't know which one it is. It must be this one. Obviously, John. Fancied himself as one of the main things. <laughs> <laughs> Josiah Bart Let. I'll find out. We'll see if anyone knows. I'm pretty sure he was one of the signatories. I'm guessing it wouldn't be it otherwise. <laughs> it was pretty cool. Yeah, amazing to think that this guy. Lived in Lewis. He was just around during the, they changed the poor laws. And he really was a bastion of people's liberty and freedom, rights of man, common sense. He wrote all these different things. Uh, that were absolutely, of the time, really well received. People wanted their liberty. Um, and then he went off to America, fought in the wars over there, and then became one of the signatories on the Declaration of Independence, which is just incredible. This dude from Lewis. <laughs> I'm mad. Well, anyway, let's get out of here. How cool. Thanks, Thomas. Somebody thankfully bought what used to be the Rainbow Pub and has turned it over to Thomas. <laughs> Good on him. Yeah. Rights of man indeed. What a dude. <laughs> I've always thought this is kind of weird, like Watergate Lane. There's a big house as well, a mansion down there called Watergate House. And then uh, remember the Watergate scandal, obviously. <laughs> that's it. Very strange though. There's like almost like a link to every weird thing that's happened in Britain right here in Lewis, somehow, whether it actually is or not. Very strange. So there's this uh, building over here that's 1330. And have a quick look at that. what it says. Wait for these people to work out what they're trying to do. Oh, fair play. Waiting for people to didn't run them over. <laughs> never judge, never judge. <laughs> Bit of a poor time, man. Building. Oh, cool, okay, yeah, that sign does say something. building opposite the castle gateway, this one, is probably part of the inn of the steward of the barony and manor of Lewis. It ceased to be used as such after 1361. Let's 
Vincent Martin was laying. So you probably guess. Some awesome steep cobbly roads down here. No neon lights though. <laughs> Yeah, this looks like it was, must be the old building, or at least what's left of it, that timber. It's awesome. And that's right opposite the castle. Might go up there again later on. And it's just interesting how all these things have happened here. I just wanted to kind of get that across. It's like an incredible, incredible amount of history of not just this country, but America as well, when you think about it. So there's St. Michael's Church. That's the one that Thomas Beckett um, apparently donated money to, where Thomas Paine was married. Uh, I'm sure other things have gone on over there as well. And then right opposite there, there's this pretty cool building, an old bookshop. I wanted to show you that. It looks like it's from Harry Potter. You're like, <laughs> it's, uh, you'll see, I'll show you. It's just past Thomas, Thomas Paine's house. And, must be one of the oldest buildings around yeah, probably in the country it's insane how old this thing looks <laughs> it is, it's amazing it's still standing but it is so there's the michael's church we're going there and there's the thing i'm just gonna um wait for this bus to go by all those wood shingles on there it's incredible that that one's still standing Yeah, this is the Masonic Lodge. I'm going to actually go and see if I can talk to them. And then here's this. That's a hard to work it out. But yeah, these are all the Masons' past, I'm guessing the Masonic leaders. I'll have a look in there later on. I tried to get into Thomas Paine's house the other day. The Archaeological Society are in there and some dude was just sat there writing something. And um, I thought I'll ask him, but you're not allowed in, unfortunately. But that's where Thomas Paine used to live in Lewis. A completely different time, it's incredible. That day, the Congregation of Westgate Chapel originated in 1662 and first assembled here for public worship in 1700. balcony up there, that's obviously where his fireplace would have been. Unless that's been rebuilt, it doesn't look like it, that looks like part of the original building. Awesome. I actually did some repairs on the house down here, not so long ago. Might have been that. <laughs> but anyway, here we come to Harry Potter House. <laughs> Check that out. miles from the standard in Cornhill, something Westminster Bridge, but no idea what that means. I'll go in and ask them if they're open. But yeah, look at this old building. You've <laughs> never seen timbers like that. Barely anything left of them. No photographs inside. Or filming. How funny. I wonder why they're so sensitive about that. Perhaps it's um trying to find the portal otherwise. <laughs> See if they're open there. So unfortunately they are shut. Oh wicked place, so I bet they've got some interesting information locked away in that bookshop. St. Clair House, this is obviously the school. Now the St. Clair family, and they got something to do with Rosslyn. 
chapel. I have to look that up, I'm not quite sure, but I'm pretty sure. <laughs> In my mind, St. Clair has some sort of... It's a wealthy family of some sort. Anyway, I bet that half of this school was put in place to indoctrinate the kids <laughs> into whatever they wanted to believe or them to believe. And I'm just going to keep going. See, there's places I haven't seen up here, Rotten Row, and you're looking out over to the Downs over there. They lead over to Kingston, the farm of the kings of the South Saxons, and then down this road, you end up at the graveyard. It's an enormous graveyard, which then runs down to South over High Street. That's, that's um, where a place called Saxon Buried House is at the end of there. And that's also where Anne of Cleves' house is. Uh, she was married to Henry VIII. Oh, no, yes, yeah, she was. Um, <laughs> she was one of Henry VIII's wives. Apparently, she never came here. I don't know whether that's true or not. So much stuff. I kind of find it hard to believe that she wouldn't have visited or stayed there a few times, but they're sort of implying that she never lived there, never was even there. So it's like, well, why? That's oh, very odd. But And then next to that is the King's Head, just a little bit further down the South Over High Street. And I think another St. John's Church. It's a very important church which backs onto the Lewis Priory, uh, which was dissolved by Henry VIII. It's just, just an incredible amount <laughs> of LinkedIn history all around here. On 3-3. Three, three. I thought I would um, come up and have a look at this church. It's one I've never been into. I think they're almost the open now. Pelham Arms, Pelham, I'm going to find out about that. Probably another person. Another Anglo-Saxon king, King Pell. <laughs> or it's got something perhaps to do with the Pell's Pool, which is a bit further down. I think that was to do with them, um, where they cleaned pelts in the Pell's Pool. Originally, they were just cold water springs, and I think that uh, yeah, they used to, the women cleaned the pelts there, and that's where it gets its hang from. Apparently, again, who knows? But maybe it was called Pelham down there at one point. Wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> That's nice. Nearby stood the parish stocks. Hurrah! What would we do without the stocks? <laughs> Let's have a look and see. So this is obviously the beginning of the older graveyard, the churchyard. Isn't that lovely? Look at those old ewes as well. 
I think they're yew trees. Yeah, they are. It's interesting. I found out that yew trees were considered sacred and holy, and a lot of the churches of Britain were built in the places they built because the old yew tree was there, and that was a place that the pagans used to worship. And I think it's uh, to do with the sign of um, infinity. They're basically immortal yew trees. They sort of never die. Um, as long as you have a little bit, it'll get, it can keep growing. So even if that whole thing died, there'd be, if there was a root underground, it would carry on going and re-sprout a new tree. And they're probably all connected somehow, those yew trees. But yeah, they're almost immortal. So these are sort of these things that link you back to the past. People used to tie ribbons and make offerings and put things in the yew trees. The yew trees are incredibly special because they are incredibly old. Some of them are so old, it's just ridiculous. Uh, even in their current forms, they've got these enormous bowls. And, but these look like, no, you know, they don't look that old. But they probably are connected to the old ones that were here once upon a time. That's a beautiful graveyard, but let's see if I can get in the church. I don't really know what's happened up here. There's one church where something happened, like a lightning ball went through the, and that sounds ridiculous, but like a, a lightning ball went through the top of the church roof and then out the front doors, but I'll have a find out if it was here. It's so cool, just about to wander around with a little gadget in my hand to take video and get it out to a couple of hundred people. It's amazing. Oh, it looks like it's shut. It's weird. Shame. Let's see if there is anything here that tells us about it. Drawing close to God in Lent. Important, wouldn't you? Is that John Boys? I don't know. The Boys. <laughs> they got a very good spot, didn't they? Huh. Get that cross there. Whether we live or die, we are the Lords. <laughs> That's nice. William Sadler, formerly vicar of Broadhambury, Devon, who died July 8th, 1905. <laughs> so funny. I keep seeing this date. I was born on July the 7th. Edward Longshanks died on July the 7th. I think one of his, one of Henry Allen's other sons, or Henry himself, died on July the 6th. It's July the 8th. I can't just keep popping up everywhere I'm going. Awesome. Oh wow, look. A whole load of back here. Archaeology. No way. Hello mate, <laughs> found anything weird down here? <laughs> no, nothing interesting, that looks like a cool hole. <laughs> no, that's, no, that's not oh, is it not? Oh, okay. <laughs> looks like a crypt entrance or something, that's awesome. <laughs> weird. Strange going through the graves. Must be weird kicking. <laughs> Cheers bud. Old. I saw a woman sitting around there. I'm trying to find out if she'll let me have a look. <laughs> oh, look at that. See, this, this is exactly what I think is inside Hamsey. Or at the back of Hamsey, and it's like sort of where, and it's just been filled in. So you've got like 
something similar to this where you have steps going down into some the vaults basically underneath the church but i think this has all been filled in with earth and rubble and god knows what else and um now it just looks like the earth backs up around it but i've got a feeling that where i say the design tomb used to be there's something similar to this that would have allowed you access to the vaults beneath the church which is no longer there there's some strange sort of mound bits there that just look wrong I'm almost certain that if people start, if, if anyone, an archaeologists could start digging just at the side of the wall, there are no gravestones there either, they'll find this. And that will then lead you down into the vaults. <laughs> and then there might be some pretty cool things in there, let's just say that. <laughs> anyway, the other graveyard runs all the way down past those council offices, right the way down the hill to South Over High Street, where you've got Saxonbury House. Uh, where the Saxons were buried. <laughs> There's so much history and language. If people start paying attention to <laughs> the names of the places they're in, it's not just a word. There's like a whole history behind every word uh, and numbers and everything. It just depends on how much you pay attention. <laughs> uh, and then you can find out some pretty impressive stuff about places you just it's all just hidden history right in front of your face so just like look up the name of the place that you're living in St Michael's Old Rectory and then you can find out so for instance there we go so who was St Michael uh, I know but you should know he <laughs> was an amazing amazing saint great story that goes with him courageous archangel that's his church down there you know like why why is he venerated here more than others? Yeah, they, they, all these questions are really important. And you've got to just stop dig, 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 dig. And that house gets abandoned. Fix her up. Pipe Passage, named after 19th century clay pipe kiln, follows Saxon and medieval access to town wall defences. That's cool. Oh wow, look at this. What is that? Well, that is the back of the castle wall. make about an hour long video today <laughs> perhaps if anyone ever wants to know anything just give me a shout and I'll take you around <laughs> okay that's another little Harry Potter house a hexagon <laughs> Jeez. the round house so there's the castle what a cool view that is, eh? <laughs> Obviously the west gate was down here somewhere. Well that was it. I think that's it, I want to go back the other way anyway. What a cool house that is. <laughs> How nice of the round house. <laughs> number seven and number three. Such a good vibe in Lewis. Oh, well, it is for me anyway. I love this place. Look at this bit of fence falling off the wall. That's what it looks like it has anyway, maybe not. It's such a quirky place, Lewis.
<laughs> oh, she did a great job. <laughs> So I just thought I would come in here. Oh, that's interesting. Let's just see if they've taken down. Yeah, they have. <laughs> there used to be a sign in here that said um, only uh, very special people were buried with swords. It used to be there. I think I've even got a picture of it, so I'll put it up. Um, unless it's in here. No, they've taken it down purposely. <laughs> That's genius. <laughs> because there were lots and lots of swords found over at the Yen Burial Ground that I was talking about over at Earwood Corner. Um, so, yeah, I'll um, put the picture of that sign that was over there up so you can see that they've not only taken that down... <laughs> Oh, it's so obvious. They're so very poor. At... <laughs> anyway, here's some really interesting stuff. Anglo-Saxon, so these are all, also probably, they weren't found here, I should think. They were probably found up on Kingston Hill. In fact, I know Gideon Mantle found one up there. Um, that was incredible looking. So where that's gone, who knows? Cool, they look pretty epic, don't they? Look at that. That is cool. Golden hilt. Long sword Kingston by Lewis Alfriston Salmerston. You gotta remember all of his swords were found over at Ewood Corner and none of them seem to be here. Oh these are cool. Proper old school axes. Shield bosses. So difficult to even know what half of these things are. I mean, those obviously are much more identifiable but those tiny things aren't so much it's that sort of what would look like oh look at that peasants revolt records destroyed in lewis castle i didn't know about that i'll find that out, out, out more about that Oh, that's so funny, they've removed that sign. And who's this poor fellow? I always find it a bit odd. It's like, yeah, we just whipped him out of his grave where he was with, with all of his things, his Anglo-Saxon stuff. And now he's just lying in a cabinet. Imagine if that was your mum. <laughs> Some pretty cool things in here. Oh, look at those Roman fibulas. Huh. They are cool. Square-headed brooches. God, they're stunning. And disc brooches. I have a couple of them that I found not quite as good as them, but perhaps an awful lot older and connected to Beowulf, so <laughs> way more valuable. What on earth is that? This sandstone slab was found on the remains of a Roman villa in Worthing. Was it now? So here we go. 
So here's the Roman road that they deny existing. <laughs> it's just fucking unbelievable. Um, and it's this London road, I think. No, it must be this one. So it's this London road that ends literally at Ewick Corner. And then this bit here, these are going over Morning Hill. So this bit shouldn't really be included. They're just pathways, but the road ends there. And the reason it ends there is because Hamsey is just there, literally on that little spit there. And um, you'd have then, that's the river running out, but the sea would have been here instead. So you'd have just got to here and then got a boat and left. And um, you wouldn't need to go any further down to the coast because you were already at the coast. <laughs> that's amazing stuff though. It's just like a little note to myself, Gideon Mantle found something called an iguanodon <laughs> in Sussex, which I'm pretty sure will end up being a Komodo dragon, uh, which was actually a knucker, uh, which are the uh, Nikors of Beowulf, the knuckers of Sussex, the dragons of this area, the water dwelling dragons. It's not an iguanodon, I bet, but I'm going to see if I can find a picture of it and then see if I can match that up to a picture of a Komodo dragon skeleton, if that exists, a picture of either. Um, but fuck me, wouldn't that be interesting if they match up? We'll see.